Hello, how are you going? I'm Doug Fleming. I'm one of the organisers for the Brisbane Unreal Engine Meetup Group. Today we are going to have a look at session 4 for our mobile game creation, Dissension. So in the last sessions we had a look at source control, an asset pipeline with Blender, how to use normal maps to keep your model's poly count reasonable for use on a mobile platform, and in this session, we're going to take our first look at using the Unreal Engine. So just before we get into that, um, we would just like to thank our sponsors, DST Drafting Solutions and Technology, for your ongoing generosity. Thanks very much, Cruz. And also Epic Games for their official sponsorship of the Brisbane Unreal Engine Meetup Group. So in this session, we're going to try and prototype an escape pod. Now this will be the first time in the mobile game series that we've looked at Unreal Engine and uh, in this project we're going to jump straight in and prototype a simple escape pod that we could use in our game. Now we're going to assume that you don't have any prior experience with the engine at this point um, however I do recommend that you be familiar with the editor. Um, there's plenty of good YouTube videos on editor tours that you can check out before continuing here and also in the Unreal Engine documents there are some docs on the Unreal Engine gameplay framework um, that's also worth a read and in particular the quick reference and the game flow overview. So the best way to get started with the engine is really to just jump in and start trying to create something. Um, you don't want to spend too much time researching all sorts of things. You really want to just jump in and get your hands dirty and start building things. In the course of doing that, uh, plenty of questions will come up and uh, that's probably the appropriate time to research that stuff. Um, as you come across problems, try and find solutions for it. That way you'll be more effective in terms of, you know, trying to um, make the engine do things. Also, I just want to point out a note to developers you don't need to work on new assets in the actual Dissension game repo. If you've done a fork of the repository on your local machine, you don't have to develop stuff in that fork. Um, you can just create a new project and play around with ideas in there. Unreal Engine has a migration tool that you can use to migrate your prototypes into the game once you're satisfied that they're ready to go into the game repo. In terms of what we will be doing with the various um, elements of this game as we go along we will be building out our prototypes just in a in a separate project and then once we're ready we will import them into the dissension repo okay don't worry too much if you don't have a great deal of experience and of course feel free to follow along if you want to try this stuff for yourself so just before we jump into the engine i just want to give a bit of context about what we're trying to build so what we're up to in the Dissension game is essentially the gameplay scene one, which is land the escape pod. The idea for this level was that the heroes have had to abandon their ship and now there are escape pods that are descending down to the planet's surface. So the gameplay for this level is really to try and control the escape pod and land it on the surface of the planet. So the idea for this gameplay scene came from like a Lunar Lander game. So you can see an example of that, uh, which I found in this video on YouTube that I'll quickly play you so you can see the kind of uh, idea behind the mechanics of the game. So here when I push play, you can see that the lander craft is um, heading down towards a landing pad and you have to make a safe landing. So they've got a couple of different scenes here where uh, you have to maneuver the craft so we're going to try and get some of that maneuverability into our escape pod so that we can actually move across the planet surface into a designated landing area although the subject for today will be just to get the mechanics of the escape pod working also while i was describing um some of the prerequisite materials I thought I'd just show you quickly where to find that so for a gameplay framework you can have a look at the docs.unrealengine.com and you can find gameplay framework there the, p the pieces in particular that would be worth checking out is the gameplay reference quick reference and the game flow overview it would also be beneficial to have a look through the other ones here if you have time to do that but those first two will probably give you the most benefit to start with if you're new to the engine 
Also, I mentioned the Unreal Engine 4 style guide. So here in GitHub, there's a style guide reference. And this is a document that outlines how to go about naming and organizing your assets. So this is also a good one to have a bit of a read through. It is quite long, so perhaps just to start with, um, just have a bit of a look at the naming convention sections here. And you can see like when we make a material, we're going to use underscore uh, M underscore. And when we make a blueprint, we're going to use BP underscore. Okay, now that we've had a bit of a look at the context, let's see if we can jump into the engine and build an escape pod that fits this kind of context. Here we are in the Unreal Engine. This is just a, a blank blueprint project. Um, it doesn't have starter content or anything like that. It's just uh, an editor that's loaded up. This is the default map that you see here. And I haven't changed anything about this yet. You can see in this project here, there's nothing in, there's no content here because we're not using a template. Uh, in this particular session where we're going to build the escape pod, we don't really need a template. Plus, we wanted to show you how to create something from scratch. And also in the course of doing that, it, uh, it will also just avoid a little bit of the complexity for beginners to the engine where some of the pre-made blueprint templates, um, they can look a little bit intimidating at first, especially if you've never used the blueprint scripting system before. So before we actually start building our prototype, we do need to set up a few things in the engine to allow us to take control of the escape pod uh, when we're building and testing the functionality. So the first thing I'd like to do here in the content uh, area is just create some new folders. So in here, we're going to need a maps folder. And this is really just following convention. So maps, uh, a core folder, that's going to hold our game mode. Um, and also we'll make a new folder called um, escape pod and that's going to hold our escape pod blueprints so when it comes time to if we like our prototype and we want to bring it into our game this would be the folder that we would migrate everything in this folder would come into the dissension repo okay so with our map um, initially this is just a unsaved map an untitled unsaved map so we really want to make this into a saved map so i'm going to go up here into file and then save current as i'm going to stick this in the maps folder and i'm just going to call this proto it doesn't really matter what you call this at this time okay in the core folder we need to create what's called a game mode and that's a blueprint class so to create that i'm just going to right click choose blueprint class and then game mode okay so we're just going to rename this blueprint to escape pod game mode okay we will come back to this game mode in uh, a second in the escape pod folder i'm going to create a new blueprint class now uh, in the hierarchy here of classes for people that are just getting started there is a, a class hierarchy here that's important to understand so in some of the, the supporting documentation the game play framework it'll explain a little bit about that but an actor uh, is simply something that can be placed into the world uh, can't be possessed so uh, and by possessed that means like when the player becomes active in a level um, they don't automatically possess uh, something that can be controlled so we need to choose a class here that can be possessed so that we can control it. So an actor would be just like a static mesh that uh, no one ever tries to take control of. A pawn is something that can be possessed and received input from a controller. In fact, that's what we're going to use for our escape pod. Uh, but pawns can get a little bit more sophisticated and become characters. And when they become characters, they also inherit like movement controllers and things of that nature. Uh, we're not going to need that for us, we're just going to uh, use a pawn for the escape pod. I'm just going to call this bp underscore escape pod. The bp underscore is just a style guide uh, thing. So when we're naming our assets in, in the game, we want to try and follow the style guide, uh, which we should put a link to that in the description of the video so that you can have a look at that. But basically, you just want to name your assets according to the style guide. That way, everyone knows what everything is just by looking at the name of the file. Okay, so I'm just going to save that. Now that we've got a blueprint for our escape pod, then we can go back to our game mode and in the game mode, we need to make a small adjustment. So 
over here there's the classes in the game mode so what we need to do is change this so the default pawn class uh, uses our escape pod blueprint okay so when this game mode runs the default pawn class that it's going to try and possess is a escape pod so we're just going to compile and save that okay so that will pretty much take care of us for our, our um, default setup here. Now we do need to change some of the project settings in order to take advantage of our setup here. So if we go up to edit project settings, then the first thing we want to look at is our maps and modes. So our default game mode, we want to change that to be our escape pod game mode that we created. And that was the one that we changed the default pawn class on. And also with our maps, we just want uh, Proto to be our default map for the editor startup and um, the game default map. The other thing that we need to have a look at in here is our input, because we are going to want to have input from the player. So we need to set that up right now. In the input bindings, there is no actions or axis mapping. So we need to create one axis, one action mapping, sorry. One action mapping called main thrust. And we're going to set that uh, to the space bar so that when we push the space bar, the main thruster fires. I'm going to create two axis mappings. One of is going to be roll left. And I'm going to set that to the left arrow key. And the other one, roll right, which I'm going to set to the right arrow key. So for our prototype, this is going to be fine because all we're really trying to do here is just uh, build out the basic functionalities and, uh, and get it all working. Once we import it into the Dissension game, we might want to have a bit more of a think about these axis mappings and maybe add support for a gamepad, all that kind of thing. But for the prototype, it doesn't really matter too much at this point. So that will do us for our project settings. Yeah, because we're trying to do a lander style game here, we need to have like a fair area so that if we maneuver around, we've got like a fair amount of room to land on the ground. So I'm just going to take the floor and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. So I'm just going to make it 50 units instead of one unit um, on the X and Y axis to make it very big. Okay. Now that it's uh, it's big, we've got plenty of area to land on. Um, the other thing that we need to do with it is we need to generate overlap events on it. And this is because we're going to use physics and with physics objects, in order to generate events, we need to have both items have generate overlap events on them. Right, so with that set up, we can jump into our escape pod blueprint. Okay, in our escape pod blueprint right now, uh, we have really got nothing. So uh, this little uh, circle or this uh, sphere that you see here is just a placeholder asset here. So if we did drop it in the world, we would be able to see it. So what I'd like to do to start with is we need to add like a static mesh component to represent our escape pod. So at this point, the actual model uh, isn't important because we're just trying to get the functionality so I'm just going to drop in a cylinder and I'm just going to drag it up so that the bottom of the cylinder is in line with the with the ground there and I'm also going to scale it up a little bit just to make it a little bit bigger in terms of its in terms of its width okay so that's uh, that's what we've got there Okay, so if I compile and save this, and now that we've added a cylinder to our, our blueprint, if we drag it into the world, we should be able to see that um, we've got that cylinder there. So if we drag the cylinder uh, around, let's just stick it up a little bit off the ground. Eventually, we're going to want this to fall towards the ground. But if we, if we do a simulation on our game right now, a simulation is, is something that you can do where you on purpose don't try and possess the pawn you just to see what happens in terms of physics in the world so if we simulate the game now you can see we don't fall to the ground or anything like that we don't have any uh, we don't have any physics um, set up yet so let's take care of that so back in our escape pod 
with our cylinder selected. We can tick on simulate physics and we also want to make sure we've got generate overlap events checked and also um, generate heat events. So let's compile and save that. Now if we go back and simulate you'll notice that we do fall to the ground. So that's great, our physics is working and the floor is stopping us. So our floor is, pr is a, um, a physics barrier to, to the uh, escape pod. Now that we are able to fall and hit the ground, uh, the next logical thing that would be good to know is that we can um, do something about hitting the ground or we can detect that we hit the ground and be able to respond to that. So I'm going to have a look at the events here called uh, on component hit. So if we click the plus button, it's going to take us through to the event graph. Uh, you can also get to the event graph through these tabs along the top. And here in the event graph, we've got um, a bunch of, uh, of nodes here that come through by default but are not active. So begin play, um, active begin overlap and tick. Um, so sometimes we will use those, but in our example, we won't. But here we've got this on component hit that we have requested. So let's just drag a wire off this. And here we've got um, a bunch of nodes that we could create based on um, this execution path. So the first node I'd like to create is called a print string. Here I just, uh, by default, it just prints a string that says hello. And for us, that will do for now. So let's just compile and save that. This is going to help. Uh, show that when we hit the ground we can then respond to that in blueprint in a way that uh, we can we can see so if we simulate again now that we hit the ground we can see that we're getting those hellos pop up there so that tells us that we are reacting to that um, hitting the ground event okay now that we can fall and hit the ground and respond to that the next thing that would be cool is um, if, if we could uh, use our main thruster to avoid hitting the ground. So if we go back to our viewport, you can see our cylinder here. I'm just going to select that. And these components are like uh, in a hierarchy, like a tree. So when you add components, you can add components to other components and they become child components. So for our cylinder, it'll be basically our root component. Uh, we want everything to be a child of the cylinder. So um, on the cylinder, I'm going to add a component called a physics thruster. And a physics thruster by itself um, is just a point that uh, that you can have like a, a physics thrust come out of, but uh, by itself it's very difficult to understand like which direction it's pointing in. So I'm going to add another component called an arrow, and that's going to help us see the direction that the thruster is pointing. So the arrow has uh, is a child of the physics thruster and it's uh, it's completely set to zero on location and rotation so it's pointing in the direction of the thrust so now we've got the physics thruster here we can adjust its rotation so if I take its Y rotation and make it minus 90 it's going to point down and then if I take its location and make it minus 50 it's going to be um, lining up with the bottom of the escape pod cylinder so that looks good, that's what we want. So now that we've got the physics thruster there, we need to uh, determine how much, like the, in the physics thruster, there's a few variables that we can tweak here. So one thing that I'd like to tweak is the thrust strength. I'm just going to, I've played around with this number a couple of times, so I kind of know what it will work here, but when you're prototyping something, you might have to experiment with some numbers, but these uh, physics units are in Newtons for the most part, so you do need quite a large number to do anything. So I'm just going to set this to um, 500,000 Newtons. Okay, now also, just for the moment to test this physics thruster, um, I'm also going to s check on the auto activate checkbox. So this is just going to mean uh, when this component is spawned, this physics thruster is automatically active. So if we compile and save that and we go back to simulate, we should be able to see our thruster in action. So we can see that the escape pod is now um, thrusting away from the ground. Okay, so that's perfect. 
So now in order to control that with our action mapping, we just want to be able to toggle this field. So if we if we turn auto activate back off again, compile and save, and then simulate, we fall back to the ground again. So we just need to be able to toggle this field here and we want to use our action mapping, our main thrust action mapping to do that. So if we go back to our event graph, we can right click here and type in main thruster and you can see here under action events we've got an event here this um, white diamond with the arrow in it is representing of a um, of an event and that event is the one that we created in the project settings under the action mappings so when we press the spacebar which is our main thruster action mapping we want to activate the physics thruster and then when we release it we want to deactivate it so to get a reference to our physics thruster, we can simply drag it into the nodes here, into the um, event graph. And then from here, there's a couple of functions attached to this. So when I drag a wire off this, I can see a list of functions that are, can be called on this, on this node. So on a physics thruster, there is a node called activate. And there is also another node called deactivate. So when we press the spacebar, we want to activate it. When we release the spacebar, we want to deactivate it. Okay, so that will work, but we're not going to be able to really see much about that right now. So I also want to have a look at the arrow. There's a property of the arrow, which is called hidden in game. So if I drag a node off this and type in a wire off that, sorry, and, and type in hidden, you can see there's a, there's a hidden in game function that we can call. So what I'd like to do is when we're pressing the, act, when we're pressing the main thruster or the space bar, we want to be able to see the arrow. So we're going to set its hidden status to not checked or not hidden. Then also, I'm just going to copy this node and paste it again. We can attach the arrow to the target. And when we release the, when we release the space bar, we want this to be set to hidden once more so we can't see it. So this way, when we push the space bar, we will see the arrow. And when we release the space bar, we won't see the arrow. And that will also correspond with when the physics thruster is activating and not activating. So let's compile and save that and then test this out in the level. Oh, we can't actually test it out in the level yet because um, it would be more interesting to have a camera attached to our blueprint so that when we possess this, uh, so we don't have to use the simulate. If we simulate right now and push the space bar, nothing's gonna happen because we haven't possessed this blueprint. So we can't actually um, cause player input to affect it. So back in the escape pod here, we're gonna just select the escape pod root element here. And we're just gonna say auto possess player. We're gonna choose player zero. The first player is always player zero. So for, for our prototype, we can just auto possess player zero. And we also want to order to receive input from player zero. This is just so we don't have to programmatically try and get those inputs. So that way we can possess and use the escape pod. One f more thing that would be cool is to attach a camera to it. So if we select our cylinder again, I'm going to add a, a component called a spring arm. And the spring arm goes with a camera. So it's this uh, little red line that you can see here and we're going to stick a camera on the end of it. So, But I'm just going to make this a fair bit longer, so a thousand units long, and I'm just going to set its rotation to minus 20 and its C position to 50. Um, that's just because I've had a play around with these numbers before, I know what's going to look cool. Then on the end of the spring arm here, I'm going to add another component called a camera. And that will just kind of attach to the end of the spring arm and look directly down the spring arm. So we don't have to make any adjustments about that really. Now on the spring arm, I do want to not inherit the pitch, the yaw and the roll, um, just simply so that we don't, we're not moving with the escape pod. The, we're just, uh, we're not rotating with the escape pod. 
So if I compile and save that, we know that this spring arm has worked because when we click on the blueprint, we can see a little viewport of what the camera sees. And so when we play the game, the arm we possess the um, escape pod, it will also use the camera that's on the spring arm. So let's try that. And this time, instead of simulate, we're going to do play selected viewport. Now you can see that we have a camera attached to the um, escape pod and we're following it around. And now if, uh, if I push this space bar, it should activate the main thruster. And you can see that we're doing that. If I release the space bar, you see the arrow toggling with the inputs corresponding to when the thrust is firing. So that's cool. That, uh, that gets us moving up and down and we can see visually that that's working. Okay, so probably the next thing that would make this a little bit more cool is to be able to kind of rotate the escape pod so that we can like move in different directions left and right. So if we go back to the, the blueprint here, we've got our spring arm there so we know which way is facing forwards. So when we're looking at the escape pod, this is the way we're looking at it here. So back on the cylinder um, component, I'm gonna add another physics thruster In this one, I'm going to call this the um, the right thruster, and I'm also going to add an arrow to to it, so we can see what direction it's pointing. So I'm going to just rotate that 90 degrees, and we're going to move it um, down the y-axis 50 units. So this might look like it's in the right spot for our needs for rotating the escape pod, but it's actually right on the center of gravity. So if we fired it from here, we would just merely strafe. So we want to actually create a rotating effect here. So I'm just going to move it up the z-axis 50. So it's like the point of where the thrust is coming from is on the corner of the cylinder. And that way it'll help us kind of rotate over. Okay. So now we also need to create a another physics thruster. And this time we're going to do the left thruster. We're going to add another arrow to it so we can see what direction it's pointing. This time we can rotate it the other way and we can move it the other way. We still need to position it along the top. Okay, so now we've got a left thruster and a right thruster. Now we're going to control these with our axis mappings. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set the initial thrust strength to zero for both of these physics thrusters. And I'm also going to check on the auto activate because in this case here, um, just to be different from the main thruster, what we're going to do is we're going to affect the thrust strength with the blueprint uh, event graph instead of just the auto activate. Okay, so if we go back into our event graph, we did have some other uh, axis mappings that we created called roll left. So, oops, that's not what we want. We want roll left the event. Okay, so this will this execution pin will fire when the axis uh, has an input, and then we'll get an axis value here, and, and it's a float between. Um, 0 and 1. So remember that the physics thruster works in newtons and we need to have quite a few newtons to get the job done in terms of physics thrusting so we're going to need to multiply this value. So the first thing I want to do is multiply this by, uh, by another float and I've played around with these numbers as well and 6,000 seems to be about right but feel free to have a bit of a play around with that yourself if you want to try some different values. Now if we're going to roll to the left then we need to fire the right thruster. So I'm going to drag a reference to the right thruster and I'm going to use a function called set thrust strength and that set thrust strength is simply um, this fit this thrust strength here that we uh, we uh, set initially to zero. So we're going to um, set the thrust strength to this new value that we've multiplied um, when we 
um, when we have an axis mapping. So when the axis value is zero, it'll be zero times 6,000 for the thrusting, then we won't roll. Also, uh, we wanna see the arrow. So um, with the arrow, this time we can't just, because we haven't got a release um, value, we need to we need to come up with a different way of deciding when to show or hide the arrow. So we can take the thrust strength out of the um, out of this function, and we can do a a comparison on it. So we want to say is this greater than another float? So let's say that if it's greater than zero point, say zero point uh, zero point one. So if it's greater than kind of just over zero. It's good not to use like actually zero here because um, sometimes with, especially with like game pads and things, they can be very small uh, values getting put through the, um, the axis mappings. So you definitely want to have like a little bit of a threshold here where you're saying that below a certain value is equivalent to zero. So this is going to give us a Boolean in return. Is it, uh, is it, um, above this number or is it not? And we can use that to determine whether to turn our arrow on and off. And to do that, we can use like a branch node. So if I type if in here, we can get a branch. It's asking for a Boolean condition that we've already calculated. So now we can say, if there is thrust, then we want the arrow to be turned on. So we can get the arrow here and say, set hidden in game. Um, if it's if it's true, if it's a greater than zero, we want the, the hidden to be not hidden, or we want the hidden value to be unchecked. And um, if it is false, or it is less than 0 0.1, then we want the, the state to be hidden, and we just have to hook our arrow into that. So we compile and save that. Um, we should test this now. Every time that we make uh, small changes, we should test them in the editor. That way, if we're making any little mistakes as we go along, we can tell that. So if we play now, I can still use my main thruster. And if I use my arrow keys, I can thrust in only one direction. Okay, so that looks like it works. So now we just really need to copy this functionality for our other axis mapping, which was roll right. So we just got to make sure we choose the event. Um, and then here we can basically copy all of this logic and just paste it in here. So we can hook up that execution pin. Now the things that we need to change or the things that are different, are the arrow. So we want to use the left thruster arrow in terms of what we're turning off and on visually. And same with the thruster. We don't want to use the right thruster. We want to use the left thruster. And we can hook up our axis like this. Compile and save. And now if we play again, our main thrust is working. We can rotate uh, in both directions. Okay, so so that looks like uh, like it's working out okay. I'm just going to move this down a little bit just so that there's no overlapping happening. Okay, so this is all of the blueprint that we've built um, so far. So right now we know if we hit the ground, we are able to react to our main thruster input. And we're also able to react to our rolling uh, axis inputs left and right. So really, um, the last thing that we really need to do for um, for this particular prototype is really determine like if we hit the ground hard enough, um, then we want to like end the game at this point. In terms of our prototype, that'll do if we just end the game. Um, and then in our uh, in our proper game, then we might decide to like decrement our life and then try again or something like that if we have a lives count or something like this. But for the prototype, uh, I think it would be just okay to just end the game. But we don't want to just end the game if we hit the ground, you know, at a gingerly pace because that 
could be considered a landing. We really just want to end the game if we hit the ground hard enough to have, you know, hurt ourselves or caused ourselves enough damage to, um, to warrant ending the game. So what we can do with this on component hit is we get a, an impulse out of this hit component, which is going to give us some values about like how, how hard we are um, colliding with something or what forces are involved in our collision. So if we break out this normal impulse, which is a vector, if you see here in the hover, is a vector, which is an XYZ value. If we drag a pin off this and type in break, we can break it into its various axes and Z is up and down in Unreal Engine. So if we check the Z axis for being greater than a certain value, then we can determine whether or not we're hitting the ground too hard. So um, for here, I'm just gonna put in 500,000 again, just to see how that goes and um, what we'll do here is instead of just printing the string, we will add a branch. So this way we can plug our condition in. So now we're only going to see the string appear in our console if we hit the ground with a Z, uh, a Z impulse um, vector of greater than 500,000. That is 500,000, yes. Okay, let's compile and save and just see what it takes to get that text to appear on the screen. So initially, we can just hit the ground. If we go up really high, let's see what happens now. No, we're still not getting any text. That number must be too high. So I'll just drop a zero off that. Try again. This kind of number tweaking is just something that you'll have to um, play around with because a lot of things is hard to determine in advance what would be a good number. So here we're getting our hit event if we go up high enough. So okay, so maybe it's still a little bit high because like we're hitting the ground pretty hard there, bouncing pretty high. So let's just uh, roll that number back to say three and try again. Okay, so now if we if we hit the ground a little bit, then that's okay. If we if we hit the ground a bit too hard, then we get our string. So you can see kind of how high it takes to get ourselves um, a string, get ourselves to print the string. So I think that's about fair. I mean, if you hit the ground, if you make it too difficult, then it's like it's too hard, be too hard to land. So maybe you could tweak that number a little bit. But, uh, but anyway, instead of printing a string here, what we want to do is quit the game. So if we choose quit game, then for now that will just end our experience. So if we hit the ground too hard, that will be just the end of the game. Let's try it. So if we just uh, land from there and hit the ground, we're fine. If we go up too high, hit the ground, that's it, the game finishes. So that's great. We've got a thruster. We can go in different directions and if we hit the ground too hard, that will be the end of the game. So if we land nice and gingerly, then that's fine. And that's where we wanna really kind of be with it. So the last thing we really wanna do now is, um, is grab the escape pod and, uh, and just kind of move it up high enough so that if you just start the game and let it go, it will just end the game. So now we have to be able to slow down and land nicely okay that's great now um more things to do to make this interesting well in the actual uh, in the actual game um, one thing that we're probably going to do is on the begin play node which is only fired once when the game begins we might assign um, an arbitrary rotation to the actual cylinder we could do that and um, and then that way it forces the player to correct the um, rotation of the of the of the um, escape pod. So, um, but I think that's probably enough for this uh, for this section. Uh, it's given you a bit of an insight into how to prototype stuff in the engine here, how to get something from nothing to uh, to something workable, something that you can actually do, uh, play around with a little bit and, uh, and tweak. And it's not too difficult to create something like this, uh, especially if, um, 
if you're new to the engine, um, it's definitely easier to create something like this than it is to try and understand some of the prototypes, although we will be using some of the prototypes in future, um, in future levels for dissension, um, but this is a great place to start. So thank you for watching. Yeah, please do come along to the next sections of our Dissension mobile game. We would love to see you at our meetups. Until then, uh, my name is Doug Fleming for the Brisbane Unreal Engine Meetup Group, and uh, I will see you next time.